y'all. All right, I was trying to do the Macarena and it didn't work out. But we good though, we good though. Welcome to Play Under Review. I am your host, the Ace 513 And like I said in the previous video, the uh, video I dropped last week, by the way, I want to say to my subscribers, I appreciate y'all. Y'all are the best. I thank you. Uh, just thank you for subscribing. Definitely thank my wife uh, who has been helping me through this process as well. You are the best. But like I said, we're going to have a Warm Moon Part 2 where I'm going to be talking about uh, his the different things that he had to overcome. Um, throughout his career, as well as dive deeper into, you know, some more of his statistics. Warren Moon wrote a book called Never Give Up On Your Dream, My Journey. And in this book, one of the things that he sheds details about is the things that he had to overcome throughout his career. One of the things being the racism that he had to overcome throughout his career. One example I give you is in this book, he was talking about his NFL draft process. And for this process, he was saying how uh, different NFL executives, coaches, you know, the who's who of the NFL at that time, they were trying to get him to switch positions from quarterback to wide receiver, running back. You know, they just didn't want him to play quarterback. Back then at that time, quarterback was known as, you know, the smart position. You know, you have to be very intelligent in order to play quarterback. And, you know, they didn't believe that Warren Moon, being an African-American, wasn't intelligent, was intelligent enough to play quarterback. So they kept trying to move him, move him to the speed positions. During this time, um, you know, the African-Americans that played in the NFL, they, you know, primarily were in these type of positions. It was only... I believe one black quarterback in the NFL at that time. And, you know, he wasn't necessarily lighting the world up. So, you know, they kept trying to push him and he wasn't having it. He was like, you know, I'm going to go to the CFL and I'm going to sign with the Edmonton Eskimos. If you notice my shirt, by the way, you know, the EE Edmonton Eskimos, a CFL. So um, just wanted to. Throw a little, throw a little flavor in here just to, to recognize the greatness that is Warren Moon. Anyways, um, so you know that's what one of the reasons why he went to the CFL. There was also a time where he was talking to an ESPN writer, and he was, you know, they were talking about football, and he was looking back on his career a little bit, and he had shared a story with this writer about how uh, one game during his career in 1990. He had threw for over 500 yards. Uh, and at this time, you know, the game was all but done. You know, he had an exceptional game along uh, with his team to the point where it was like, you know, it doesn't matter if Warren Moon is in or out um, at this point in time because they are going to win. So they went ahead and pulled him out, you know, try to make sure he stays healthy and whatnot, you know, NFL protocol. So they pulled him out early from the game. The very next day, an uh, article came out uh, from a newspaper, African-American newspaper, who called Warren Moon uh, Uncle Tom. And the reason why they called Warren Moon an Uncle Tom is because pretty much they were upset at the fact that he didn't stay in the game to try to break a record that would have been uh, very beneficial for a black man to uh break a record where you know african americans can truly appreciate that being broken and so they called him uncle tom because he got pulled from the game early that's the type of crap that he had to endure throughout his uh nfl career regardless he stayed the course and he followed his dream uh granted uh, you have to keep in mind that one of the reasons that he was able to get an opportunity in the nfl is because when he went to the cfl he lit the cfl on fire and i mean in the sense of he did phenomenal in the cfl to the point where the nfl could not ignore what he's been doing in this league after the sixth season in the cfl was over he became a free agent uh, there was a bidding war, like I said in the last video, in the NFL for his services. He elected to start off 
with signing with the Houston Oilers as a rookie at 28 years old. Keep in mind, this is his first season playing in the NFL, and he's 28 years old. But the crazy thing about his career is as he aged, his game got better. After he turned 34, it was four uh, seasons that he threw for over 4,200 yards. 34 years old was actually one of the best seasons that he had uh, as a quarterback where he threw for 33 touchdowns and uh, 13 interceptions. When he was later on in his career, when he went to the Seattle Seahawks and he started 15 games for the Seahawks, he threw for a, a NFL best at the time. Uh, he threw for an NFL best 240 yards, 245 yards uh, per game. Warren Moon was phenomenal even in his 40s. He got to play in four different generations. So as he hit, you know, 44, 44 is the number where Warren Moon decided to finally retire, hang up his cleats, um, and, you know, finish up his NFL career. But uh, he, you know, when he retired, he left a legacy of kicking in the door for future African-American quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, uh, Deshaun Watson. Uh, it's a lot of black quarterbacks at that position now. Um, and in my opinion, I don't think they would have that opportunity if it wasn't for the things that Warren Moon did throughout his career. Being able to see somebody that looks like me, I'm appreciative of that. But yeah, that is the greatness that is Warren Moon. Um, I'm glad you all were able to tune in to part one and two. Next week, we're going to be talking about a running back by the name of Steven Jackson. So if you are interested in, you know, hard hitting, stiff arm, I'm going to break your ankles, you going to learn today type runs, maybe you want to tune in next week. Until then, I'll let you later. Take it easy.